Hello, my name is Manuel Vega uh, from PicoQuant, and today in this video I would like to show you how to make a flim measurement with um, A1R system, confocal system from Nikon upgraded with PicoQuant. Of course, the first thing to do is to locate our sample with the Nikon microscope. This we could do in wide field, so the sample is already in focus. And if we want to change to confocal, we have to remember that we can have to change here to the side port manually, and then here release the interlock. So once the interlock is released, As we see here, we've got different configurations. I can just pick the configuration for confocal imaging. And when it's activated, I can just click scan. So this is our confocal image. It's possible with this little button here to move around our image, like double click will center where we would like to measure. Like for example, I will pick this daisy pollen here. And to stop, we just click scan again. If we would like to have a snapshot of that, we only have to go to capture. And then the image is saved in the PC from Nikon. So the next step is to change the flint configuration. So we go here to our flint configuration. So the NIST software from Nikon gives you the possibility to pre-configure pre different settings. This you can choose for confocal imaging or you can use for flint imaging. So here we've got two flint setups, one for 485 and, another, and another one for 440. If I open it, and I look at the optical diagram, we see that in these settings, we've got the PicoQuant Pulse the laser here activated, and also a dichroic, which could match this, this, this spectral line. If we change the configuration, for example, for 480, for 440, sorry, Then we will see that the 440 is activated and we also have a different dichroic that would match this, this laser. So all these settings have to be previously configured in the NIST software. OK, so I think I will go for the 485. So I will change it again. Well, and very recently, between Nikon and Picogong, we have developed a third software, which we call at the moment Macro Plugin, which is here in this green icon. And this software is able to read the settings of the confocal microscope and transfer those settings to the Sinfo Time software. At the same time, this Macro Plugin also makes the acquisition a lot easier. It's, for example, now possible to make set stack of flim and acquire them with the same for time and then transfer them back to the NIST and do the analysis with them. In flim measurements, there are two things we have to control. Most importantly, the first one is the repetition rate of the laser we want to pulse with. We have to pick a repetition rate which is low enough to allow the whole population to decay. And the second one is to control the count rate. Due to the dead time of the electronics, we have to keep the count rate to 5%, tape percent of the excitation rate, depending on how accurate we want to be, and depending if we're doing FRET or if we're doing, for example, molecular sensing. To do all these settings in this macro plugin, we we'll go to the flame bottom, and here we click to test. When the test is activated, we see that the simple time here starts to measure. 
and it's info time software to control uh, the repetition rate. Well, to check the repetition rate, we can go here to this tank already the single photon counting tab. And now with the manual laser driver, we can change here. So now we would have a repetition rate of 80 megahertz. And we will see that this decay that is ending here actually is wrapping around here, and we see it here. That's why this repetition rate looks nicer for this for this given sample, we've got here a flat line, we have here a flat line, so the background is matching here and here. And this repetition rate, 20 megahertz could be just too slow. So because we have all we have all here these channels which are not using. So we want to optimize this. And we keep it in this case at 40 megahertz. Of course, when you check the repetition rate, you have to make sure that here you've got enough counts. Here we've got 10 to the 4 counts because, of course, if it decays too, if your intensity is too low, for example, like this, and then you put here to 80 megahertz, of course, you will never cover the whole, you will never, co you will never ho cover the whole, the whole window. So you at least you have to have in the order of 10,000 counts, let's say. Once we have determined the repetition rate we want to measure with, the next step is to, to set a proper count rate for the, for the measurement. To control the count rate, we have two tools. First of all, we're going to look here at the time trace. And this bar here is like 10% of the, of, the, of the excitation rate, so 4 mega counts. And this here serves as an estimation. We have also to think that these, that these spikes that we see here are bins of pixels, and therefore, since we have bright and dark regions, this would mean that um, the actual count rate in a bright pixel can be even higher than that. So this could only take as an estimate, and to really be accurate and to know what is, and if, if we don't want to overcome the pileup in the brightest pixels, then we look at these two tabs here. We go to the maximum count rate for channel one, and we see that we have 4 million counts, so really 10%. But if we go to the detector number two, we've got 6 million counts in the brightest pixel, so even above this 10%. So what we'll do now is reduce the intensity to have at least one at 5% and another one a little bit higher. So 5% means 2 mega counts. So this would be good measurements for setting in any, any kind of measurements, even, even fret in which you would like to be really accurate with the lifetimes. We've got here roughly 5% in the brightest pixel, and here we've got a little bit more. So once we have determined our settings, we stop on the macro plugin, and we can go to record. Here, in the record displayed, and due to the size of the video, we just picked one detector. And while we are querying, we're seeing the decay 
in this detector, we see in the time trace, here with this 10%, um, and here we've got, we can have a preview of our online image. As we acquire, we can play with the intensity and also with the flame contrast already. For example, I will, I will tune this between one nanosecond and three nanosecond. And we'll see that we've got regions which are blue, another one which are more greenish. The lifetime is displayed in a rainbow scale, so blue means short lifetime, red means long lifetime. So at the moment we've got every photon, every pixel with lifetime below one nanosecond is displayed as blue. Every photon, every pixel with lifetime above three nanoseconds is displayed as red and everything in between is in this rainbow scale. He also would like to mention that this flim image that we've seen here is online flim, so it does not imply any fitting, only the arrival time, the average arrival time per pixel is displayed. But it's already a good estimate if we want to see if we have flim contrast or not. So it's always a question of when to stop a flim measurement. So this, of course, depends on your sample. But typically, if you don't know, have an idea and you just want to, you're doing your first measurement, as a rule of thumb, you can, you can stop when the brightest pixel have acquired, let's say, 1,000 photons. So to look which is your brightest pixel, you can just unclick here in this tab, and we see that our brightest pixel have, at the moment, gathered or collected 1,400 photons. So this could be enough. And actually, if we look at the whole decay, we've got around 1 million counts in the whole image here in the maximum. So we can stop. And stop it here. So the image is transfer. to the scene for time.